Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. I'm Sergeant Tony Slocum, SLOCUM, Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police Peru Post. To my left, you have uh, Cass County Sheriff Randy Pryor, uh, State Fire Marshal Jim Greason, and also from the Department, Indiana Department of Homeland Security, uh, Dave Hosick. Uh, thank you very much for coming today on, on such a sad occasion. I'll rehash uh, what has already occurred today at approximately 1.49 a.m. Cass County Dispatch received a 911 call uh, reporting a fire at 4317 Potawatomi Point Road. That's 4317 Potawatomi, Potawatomi Point Road in Cass County, Indiana. Uh, two sheriff's deputies arrived on scene in approximately six minutes. Uh, they found two individuals who were able to escape a home at that address that was fully engulfed in flames. Uh, those two individuals were transported to Logansport Memorial Hospital. Uh, at this time, they are still in the hospital, uh, but they are not suffering from life-threatening injuries, so they're expected to survive. They, they do have some medical issues that are being dealt with. Uh, but those are non-life-threatening in nature. At this point in the investigation, uh, all agencies are supporting the Cass County Sheriff's Department, who is the lead agency in this case. Uh, at this point, we have recovered four bodies. Many firefighter personnel have recovered four bodies from the burned home. Uh, one adult male, one adult female, and two children. Uh, as we speak right now, uh, fire department personnel from various fire departments are still on scene doing the painstaking work of having to comb through debris uh, to look for more bodies and also to recover evidence. Uh, that's where we're standing at this point. Uh, so right now I'd let uh, Cass County Sheriff Randy Pryor, uh, who is here to answer questions for you. Like Sar Sergeant Slocum said, uh, 1.49 uh, a.m. this morning, uh, our E911 dispatch got a uh, call of a house fire on Pottawatomie Road. Uh, our officers arrived uh, around 1.55 a.m. and uh, uh, those officers, uh, one Nick Boyer, the other one uh, Ryan Preston, uh, attempted to gain entry into the second story of the home uh, and they were pushed back by smoke and flames so it uh, pretty much fully engulfed when they got there uh, about uh, six or seven minutes after they received the call. Uh, they did locate two people that had escaped the home and, uh, and then medical authorities took them to the hospital where they were treated and uh, as uh, Sergeant Zolcom said are still at Memorial Hospital. We did talk to other family members that uh, come upon the scene later, uh, about an hour later, hour and a half later, and they indicated to us, along with the folks that escaped the home, that uh, there could possibly be up to six individuals in, in the residence. And that's where we come up with that number. We can't confirm that number. Uh, we can't deny that number at this point, other than that's the information we receive from uh, family members that uh, came up to us later. So uh, with that in mind, uh, are there any questions uh, that you have? Sheriff, then if you don't know the exact number, if six is the number and four have been recovered, can you talk about, sir, how you're trying to rule out that there are two other people, possibly two other children still in that home? Right. Uh, our investigation is going to continue uh, this evening, uh, continue tomorrow. Uh, we're uh, going to do our best to locate those individuals if indeed they are in, in the residence. So uh, it's, uh, it's a long, uh, tedious situation where it's, uh, I know a lot of you expect a, a quick answer in, in, uh, for us to give, uh, but investigation, especially fire investigations, take some time. Uh, sometimes days, sometimes weeks, uh, even longer. So. so are there two kids out there where the family doesn't know where they are? 
Uh, I, I believe the family is pretty sure that they're they're in a residence, but uh, I can't confirm that. Sure. How uh, difficult is this for you, other law enforcement officers, other investigators, going through that, that out there? Aside from the physical difficulty. Of it? Right. We have we have, uh, uh, and uh, I appreciate that question. We have investigators from the Cass County Sheriff's Department, Logansport Police Department. Uh, the Indiana State Police, uh, uh, these are investigators that are out asking some questions and knocking on some doors, uh, trying to find some answers. So hopefully we'll have more information tomorrow with that. Uh, Logansport Police Department has a crime scene investigator and so uh, as well as the state police. So we're using all the resources that we can come up with to, to come to some conclusion in in this matter. So, and like I said, it's not going to be today. It may be days or, or weeks ahead. So, sure. Can you tell us if it's one family that's there, or their parents, and these are their kids, or do you know at this point? I I believe uh, they're all related somehow. Uh, I can't say that it's mom and dad and siblings. Uh, uh, I believe there may be some ch stepchildren or other. Do we have ages on the two children that were found? or the ones that are, do we call the other two missing? Uh, I'm going to refer that question to the coroner's office. Uh, once he makes identification, he'll be able to answer that for did you. Did the dogs help in, in identifying or at least finding the bodies? Or did the, bodies uh, the cadaver dogs have helped today. Uh, and that, uh, I think, from the state fire marshal's office had uh, requested those uh, in assisting and locating. Uh, when you have devastation that, like the, we had today, uh, uh, with the fire, it, it uh, takes uh, maybe a little more sensitive nose than, than uh, what a human has. So, Can you tell me more about your two deputies that were there? First of all, were they hurt? And also kind of talk about what they saw, what they experienced as they were there. Uh, their experiences, uh, and I think some of you uh, talked to them early this morning, if you were here, that uh, I uh, talked to them briefly uh, this morning on, on what they did. They uh, sort of jumped on the roof of the first floor uh, of the residence and, and uh, broke a window, tried to get into the second story. Uh, the flames and smoke pushed them back, and uh, Deputy Nick Boyer did have some smoke inhalation, uh, but uh, he refused treatment at, at the present time. So. I know it's early, but any indication at this point of a, a preliminary cause, or do you have any idea of where, what part of the house uh, may have caught fire first? Uh, I believe, uh, and this is just by the, the survivors of the fire, that uh, the fire started southeast part of the residence. I can't uh, confirm that, but uh, I believe that's what my deputy said. Sheriff, were the bodies all found in one room? Were they found together? Uh, uh, they're, they're found in different places in, in the residence so far. In bedrooms, sir, or? I can't answer that. Thank you, Sheriff. There has been some chatter today that there may be a death investigation happening in Carroll County that has a connection to what happened here. Can you comment on that at all? Or is that uh, I'll that briefly happened? comment on that. Uh, there is a death investigation in Carroll County, and I believe that uh, that death uh, is, a, is a male, and that male may be related to some of the individuals in the house. Are you able to say the nature of that death? I mean... How that I haven't been involved in that investigation. I'm, I, I'd just be speculating uh, on that matter. So, uh, like I said, our investigation and, and that investigation continuing uh, will, for the next few days, we'll have more information. Uh, How is this weighing on you, your deputies, the firefighters you know very well? There's a very good likelihood that six people died in that fire. You're all parents. You all have kids. You're somebody's kid. How is it weighing on you? Uh, well, something that uh, even law enforcement and firemen and, and medical uh, responders uh, never get used to. Uh, we never get over it, uh, sort of like the public and everybody else. So it, uh, it bothers us, and, but uh, we realize that uh, we have a duty to uh, the you folks, to the citizens of Cass County, and uh, to, to do our duty. And sometimes it's a, it's a tough job to do. Sure, a follow-up to the question from my colleague regarding the situation in Carroll County. Did, did that incident occur after the fire or before the fire? 
You know, when did that come to your attention? Uh, that's uh, the investigation is still ongoing, and uh, we'll try to determine that sometime in the next few days. Is your office in, in communication with Carroll County to, to see if there's a link there? Uh, early on, our officers uh, did have some contact with Carroll County, uh, and, and it's not Carroll County. I think it uh, uh, somewhere in Carroll County, and I'm not sure what the police department or coroner's office. Uh, is involved in there. And earlier, there, there was uh, some talk about this being treated as a criminal investigation. Is still that is that still the case? And well, uh, I think any fire, any uh, fire of this magnitude, uh, you have to start out with a criminal investigation. To, uh, you want to find out all the facts you can, uh, whether it's an accidental fire, or whether it's something uh, something more. So uh, we start out criminal, and uh, and if it uh, turns into an accidental fire, then so be it. So, so you haven't ruled out arson at this point? Uh, we haven't ruled out anything because the uh, fire marshal is still there investigating the matter. So, well, we'll go ahead now, and uh, since you're asking questions about the fire itself, is uh, utilizing all the resources available to help out Sheriff Pryor and his deputies uh, is Indiana State Fire Marshal Jim Greason. Well, good afternoon or early evening. Uh, first, I want to just make a comment. I know that the outcome today isn't what we hope for in public safety, but I want to take a moment just to commend the uh, telecommunicators, the dispatchers that received those calls, those two deputies that responded first, the firefighters, EMS personnel. They responded under some very trying conditions, weather-related issues with wind, a fire, driven, a fire that was driven by some wind in that residence, uh, obviously the rural nature of that fire and having to bring water with them. So. Uh, they all deserve a lot of credit for the work they tried to do in attempting to save those lives. So uh, we really want to keep those people's thoughts in, in, in our prayers, as long as those families in mind. Because it's a, like the sheriff and, and the trooper said, public safety is a tough job. And I can tell you standing there today as we, re we make some recoveries, you know, I get memories of incidents I've responded to over the last almost 50 years now. But I can tell you, it, it, it's a tough job. And we need to think about those individuals too. And, I, and saying that, uh, we are going to offer peer support uh, for those individuals, uh, either from local Logansport, uh, our, our office, and potentially Indianapolis Fire Department to make sure those individuals uh, have the opportunity to get some help they may need. Can you talk a little bit more about the challenging conditions you face with regard to the water issues, how long it took to strike the fire, and uh, the, the, the temperatures, yeah. et cetera? Well, to begin with, obviously, as, as the sheriff said, that, that when the deputies got on the scene, this, fire was, this house was heavily involved which means that obviously you're in a rural area. Response times are, are longer than they are in, in, in urban areas. Uh, there are no hydrants in that area, so the firefighters, there's a tanker, if you notice out here in this fire station, it carries 2,500 gallons of water. That 2,500 gallons of water is put into what the fire department calls a dump tank. If you were at the scene, you may have seen it up there. It's a kind of a rectangle unit that holds water. And then from that, the firefighters pump water out of that and are able to fight the fire. So there, there is some, it's a time element. It's just the nature of the job. It takes time to set up. It takes time to get water flowing, and it takes time to do that. So obviously, fire uh, doubles and triples itself nowadays very fast. Uh, the type of uh, appliances we have in our homes today, a lot of petroleum products, synthetic materials burn very rapidly. I can tell you that the toxicity level in, the, in those types of fires is very high. Uh, the temperature uh, from the floor to a ceiling in a house of a fire of that nature uh, varies by hundreds of degrees. It's not tens, it's hundreds of degrees. Uh, and, uh, you know, if an individual uh, tries to escape, they're in a panic mode, they take a deep breath, they're almost overcome immediately by the toxic fumes. And that, that's difficult. We typically find uh, many fire fatalities very close to exits. They know where the door is, they try to get to the door, but it's so consuming of them that they just don't make it. So um, it's very trying. Uh, and it doesn't matter what type of fire department you're on. Getting to the scene and having people trapped in a residence or a home and trying to get in to locate them. Uh, in the case of children, a lot of times children will hide in a closet or under a bed. So you have to perform those searches. And those searches are very labor intensive and, and they take time. What have your investigators found so far as in determining the cause and origin how difficult is it going to be determining those things given the condition of the house? At this point, our focus has been on, on recovery of the bodies and discovery of them. 
As we work toward that, though, we have also kept in mind that if there's anything we see, any evidence that may, when I, when I talk about evidence, anything that may indicate where a fire may have started or something of that nature, we will make sure we preserve that. We are using an excavation tool, a, a claw hammer, or a, a, a claw, I guess, shovel, uh, to remove debris. So we have to do that very, very cautiously because we, we want to respect those bodies that are in there also. We, there's a respect thing here. And so we take our time to make sure that we show that respect, that we don't disturb anything that may be there that we want to, that we want to need in the future. And if we would happen to find something, we want to make sure we preserve that evidence and get it properly recorded. Marshall, following the 2012 Southside explosion in Indianapolis, investigators knew within two days or three days the cause. Mm -hmm. And I know your focus right now is on the bodies mm -hmm. and being sensitive to the family. But you have expertise on the ground. You have four investigators right. on that scene. Will they know something is not right here shortly? I mean, will they know as they look through this scene what's not adding up? The difficulty in that is going to be the total amount of destruction. Uh, there is so much destruction in this home. The, the, the roof has collapsed. The second floor has collapsed. So we have to dig through that debris. And as we dig through that debris, if there is an indication, uh, if there is one area of the home that maybe have more charring than another, or we, show, we should uh, show flame spread in a certain way, we will record that. But I will, I will just tell you, it's going to be very difficult with the amount of damage and the demol demolition of the home. You think, sir, you'll, obviously your folks are, are experts at what they do. Do you think you'll need any assistance from the federals or any, anyone else to come in and assist you uh, on this case? I, I gave that direction this morning when I talked to our investigators that if they feel they need to in, in, involve the ATF, the alcohol, the back and firearms and bomb in the unit, we will do that. Have you called them yet, sir? We have not called them yet. But you will if you need to. If we need to, we will. Are you able to describe the house as it was standing and just kind of give us an idea of the size of the structure, I mean, how many bedrooms, just, just so we can get kind of a better mental picture of how big this thing is? Yeah, was. I would not know the detail of that because of the destruction, but if you've been there, this home was built right on the Wabash River. Uh, the front of that house is kind of built into a hill, and almost uh, when the sheriff talked about the two deputies stepping on the roof, the, the first floor roof was almost level with that embankment of that home where it was built in. It receded back toward the river. It had a, 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 what I reserved to be a concrete block wall on, the, on what we call the B and D side and probably the C side uh, of the residence, which is A's the front and walk around this. That's how we do things in firefighting. Uh, we identify by size. But um, it left that concrete block construction. Obviously, the roof and the roof systems were you know, rafters and joists and, and roofing, asphalt roofing. Uh, the types of how many bedrooms, I do not know. Uh, and what type of furniture and the amount of furniture. Obviously, there's so much destruction, I don't know that either. Does, does having that concrete or those concrete walls, did that make the fire worse? Did it, I mean, did, did, does that have any play into how bad this was? It's hard to tell, to be honest with you, uh, because it's, it's a, when the police officers arrived, the sheriff's deputies, it sounds like that fire had already vented itself. Obviously, once the fire vents through a window, a doorway, however that is, yes, the concrete blocks will hold the heat in and they're not going to burn like normal wall studs would, but they're going to be substantially structurally more sound than what wood would be. I had heard earlier that um, the first people there did not hear smoke detectors or anything like that. Do you have any more information about that and would that have made a difference? I don't know. I don't know that the first part of your answer. I don't know if they had smoke alarms, but I will tell you that uh, having a working smoke alarm in your home is the best chance you have of survivability of a fire. I mean, early warning, it allows you to, to get out. And I do know that this, this uh, area had an active um, smoke alarm program at one time. They've actually done that, I don't, but I just don't know if the, that home has, uh, did have a, an operating or, or even had a smoke alarm in it. We have not gotten that far. Marshall, you have two cadaver dogs that are performing their task. Uh, do you switch out those dogs, sir, on day two, or, or are they allowed, can they do their jobs indefinitely? Yeah, we'll leave that up to the handlers. Uh, they know their dogs, and if, they're, if they need to have uh, rehab, just like anyone, those dogs need rehab also. So if we get to that point where, where if we're into that long time period, we'll ask those cadaver, those operators, dog handlers, if they need to rotate those uh, canines. So there's also video. There's also video of this house fire on social media, uh, and someone recorded it. Will that help you at all as well by seeing how that the flames and yep. how it all played out? As part of the investigation. Anything we can look at helps out. Anything. And just like uh, uh, Trooper Slocum said and, and, the, and the sheriff, if anyone out there has any kind of information, if they were just driving by and, and went on their way and, and later, if they have any information of something they saw or know about this incident, we want them to reach out to either the 
uh, Cass County Sheriff's Department or Indian State Police and let them give them information. Were there any pets in the home? I believe there was a, was there a, a dog? Is that right? We right? heard they had a, a dog and a yeah. rabbit that was rescued. Yeah, and there were ancillary other animals outside of the home. I mean, there were some other like chickens and livestock type animals. You're talking days at the crime scene for your investigators? I would say we're, yeah, we're in the very early stages, really, and it could potentially be days until, unless we gather some information from the two individuals who escaped, unless they can provide us with information, the investigators, that lead us to something that we can help solve that, w w that may help us, it should help us. How hopeful are you, are that these two people are able to talk to investigators and provide some details? I'm very hopeful. I mean, that's, that's our link. That is our link that we know what was going on prior to the fire, what the circumstances were in that household, and what conditions were. That's, it's, that's very vitally important to us. Do we know how they were able to get out when so many others were not? I do not. They were out of the house when the, 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 the deputies got there, so I do not know. Sheriff, can, can you just stick to the podium, sir, for a second? Uh, are they cooperating with you, the folks that, uh, Mr. Slocum said they were not facing life-threatening injuries. Are these folks, as best as possible, giving you information that's allowing you to do your job? They, they have talked to... Uh, our detectives that uh, are investigating the fire, uh, I don't know the content of that conversation, well, but they I'm are. Not yeah, I, I believe they are comp, uh, cooperating. So they're ready for coming. They are right. they're working with right. you. Do, did they call 911, or do we know where that 911 call came from? Uh, I'll let, I'll let yeah. Tony answer that. Uh, to answer your question about who called 911, it was a neighbor from a, uh, about three houses away. He heard his uh, dogs barking. Uh, woke up to investigate that, and he called uh, 911, reporting the fire. Sergeant, so what's next, sir? Obviously, uh, your investigators are still on the scene. Do you plan to have another briefing later this evening, or how will we know what you find? Um... Well, I don't anticipate a, another briefing, but we will probably handle things from here on out in a press release, unless there's some uh, pretty newsworthy type events that are recovered. Uh, as we go throughout this investigation. Uh, one thing I would like to, uh, to put out there is, is, is please wrap this uh, Cass County first responder community uh, with your arms, love, and prayers. I mean, they've had a tough stretch in this community from uh, a young toddler that was accidentally shot to uh, two teenagers recently killed in a alleged DUI crash to last night they had two uh, individuals that were killed in a, an alleged hit and run incident and this is the third fatal fire, I believe, within the last year. Uh, it's a tough stretch, and uh, Cass County is one of the seven counties the Indiana State Police Proof Post covers, uh, and there's no finer professional of men and women in the first responder community uh, than I see here operating on a daily basis. As I said, if you went back to the scene right now, uh, they're doing the painstaking work that nobody dreams of doing. When you want to be a firefighter or a police officer, you dream of putting out fires and chasing bad guys. You don't dream about combing through a home, uh, recovering bodies, and, and looking for evidence in a death investigation or, or any kind of investigation. And they will remain on the scene, sir, indefinitely or until at some point it's caught off? Well, until, until investigation is concluded and we, we've gone as far as we can, just like any other investigation. Will they be working overnight? Is it one of those situations? Well, we're going to have uh, officers on scene providing scene security. Obviously, when you uh, the lighting conditions deteriorate, it, it makes it unsafe for anybody to actually be in the structure. Uh, but there will be uh, emergency personnel on scene all night, and then they will come back uh, tomorrow and go full force uh, with this investigation. But as of right now, uh, before we started this press conference, they were still uh, dismantling that home with the uh, heavy equipment and seeing if they could uh, recover any more bodies or evidence. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, the Salvation Army who's on scene today helping uh, provide uh, resources, whether that was food or drinks, not just to us, but also to the media folks that were on scene. Uh, a scene like this uh, requires a lot of help and, and this community has provided it to uh, all the first responders. If you do not have any more questions, that concludes our press conference. Thank you. Thanks so much. Sure, can I get a quick spelling for your name, sir? 